The previous examples we showed of using prisms primarily treated them as compact solid mirrors. And that's a useful and very common technique to use for prisms. Now we're going to talk about primarily refracting through prism surfaces rather than reflecting off of them. Uh, the functions you can implement here uh, are, of course, quite different than those that you get uh, via refraction through the surface of a lens because that lens surface is curved. There's a lot of these. There's books written about the use of prisms. Uh, and uh, so I'm just going to give you sort of two extremes uh, that consist of either very strong change of ray angle, so a, a significant deflection, or the opposite, very, very weak. And those give you very different functions and will give you a flavor of the kind of things you can do. The example I have, ha have here for controlling the light is in this case controlling the shape of a beam of probably monochromatic light. Hopefully it's obvious to you now why if you're doing strong refraction through a prism surface, monochromatic or laser light would be probably the thing to use. Um, you'll find these often in front of laser diodes. Uh, laser diodes have a uh, typically elliptical beam that, of course, we'd like to circularize because most of our applications for lasers would like a round beam. So we need something that's, that's telescope-like, but just in one dimension. We could implement that literally with cylindrical lenses and a standard telescope, but this is actually uh, more commonly used uh, because it's more compact. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in a beam, which I've shown just two rays of, uh, but we imagine that we have a bunch of parallel rays here, and uh, simply refract at large angle out of this prism face. And I've shown the easy case to compute, uh, which is where we're coming in normal incidence to, uh, to one of the prism faces. And just a little bit of geometry uh, here will show you that you get an effective magnification, a change of scale of this collimated beam uh, that depends uh, only on the, the fact that the two projected areas here have to be equal, and that gives you something that relates to the cosines of the refraction angles. You could then use Snell's law uh, to discover uh, you know, a function only of one of the incident angles. Uh, pretty darn convenient. Um, good uh, is that you can make uh, this with just a single prism. That's a pretty cheap element. If you want to uh, not deviate the beam, uh, you can use two prisms in a symmetric arrangement. Uh, now you get uh, two factors of that magnification. Uh, it's inexpensive. Um, and uh, if you've got nice flat surfaces, which are a relatively easy thing to fabricate, uh, it tends to be very low aberration uh, cylinders. You've got to make sure that you've uh, made a truly cylindrical surface. It is a little bit tricky. Um, as you go to make very large magnification here, or small magnification uh, in the sense of, of one over a large number, um, you're going to be coming off at increasingly large angles. Uh, that's going to start to get interesting in terms of tolerances and, of course, polarization dependence for male losses of that surface are going uh, to be quite different for the two polarizations. Um, because the tolerances are going to go up, you approach, of course, zero magnification or, or infinite compression of the beam when you get right uh, close to total internal reflection. That means you, uh, if you have angular uh, deviation or bandwidth in this beam, if it's got some content, then it's going to uh, see a very different magnification depending on the angles that are coming in here. So this really is most appropriate for very collimated beams, things like, uh, like laser beams. However, it gives you an example of something that you could do with cylindrical lenses. That would be something traditional that we've learned in this course. But here's a function uh, that you can implement instead with these prisms and strong refraction through the surfaces.